Since the 1970s, David Pilgrim has collected everyday objects that mock and dehumanize African Americans. The founder and director of the Jim Crow Museum of Racist Memorabilia argues that although the artifacts are offensive, they can be used as teaching tools to promote conversation and understanding. In the late 1820s, Thomas Rice, a white, a struggling white stage actor, uh, black in his face, uh, adopted a, a persona of a black, um, I, I don't know any other way to say it, buffoon, and uh, started entertaining audiences. He was not the first person, of course, to dress in blackface. Uh, wasn't even the first person to dress in blackface and imitate blacks as fools, but he was probably the first to become famous doing it. And uh, it wasn't very long before blackface minstrelsy had taken off in the United States because his stage name was Jim Crow. Uh, it at some point became a synonym for all the ways that blacks were mocked, belittled, and discriminated against. You know, when we ask people like, what is Jim Crow? Some of them will say, well, you know, it's the laws. And it, because they, they have some vague understanding that, okay, the whites only are the, you know, segregation. I think most people are familiar with segregation and yeah. the Jim Crow laws. Okay. Um, I know when a lot of people talk about the laws, they have the misunderstanding that the laws were created at a very specific mm -hmm. point in time all at once. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, we educate people here at the museum that those laws were occurring all over the country, even here in northern Michigan, mm -hmm. and at very different points within the Jim Crow period. And so the, and the laws are critical, but the system didn't run just on laws. It also ran on, on customs and practices. And so even in places where, where you may not have had as many laws, uh, you still had Jim Crow practices, practices that supported the racial hierarchy. Um, and when that failed, you had violence, either the threat of violence or symbolic violence or actual physical violence. And, uh, you know, I, I, I say this and I, I, I don't think this is a mistake. The Jim Crow, the, the, the system of racial hierarchy, popularly known as Jim Crow, could not have existed in this country without violence. It just couldn't have. Now, we've added another layer to the understanding because we make the point that the system was also propped up by millions of everyday objects and uh, postcards and ashtrays and incense burners and children's games, which are an especially pernicious way to spread racial propaganda. Uh, you name an everyday object and the, the ideas that undergirded Jim Crow were reflected in those objects, which in turn helped to shape future attitudes about African-Americans.